Hi everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. We interrupt this week's regularly scheduled threat snapshot to bring you the latest news on two critical OpenSSL vulnerabilities that were disclosed earlier this week. Dubbed Heartbleed 2.0, these vulnerabilities are in the OpenSSL's processing of the email parameter of certificates. Malicious certificates that exploit these vulnerabilities lead to buffer overflows and potentially remote code execution. Yes, the sky is falling. These are critical. Patch now. Cancel your PTO. Wait, is this still Halloween? Trick or treat? Is this a bad joke? Yeah, okay, so these vulnerabilities aren't that critical. Um, this has actually been downgraded to high, and further analysis has shown that these are not really that big of a deal. No, this is not Heartbleed 2.0, and while I do appreciate OpenSSL taking this seriously, um, very promptly issuing a patch and notifying the community, uh, as InfoSec professionals, I'm not going to get on a soapbox here for too long, but we really need to do better about not spreading fear when it's not really due and necessary. Um, not going to cover this too much, and this is actually not the feature for this week's Threat Snapshot. I'm going to point to two resources if you're very interested in this um, from Datadog. They did a really good analysis of the advisory. They created POCs, and they have some really you know, in-depth takeaways here. Um, bottom line, on Windows, you may lead to denial of service, which, again, um, obviously, if this is a production application that is going to um, be reading you know, X.509 certificates that you know, could potentially be crashed, nobody wants that in a production environment. Um, on Linux, it is theoretically possible, but it's been a lot harder to develop POCs. Um, there are POCs out there, so this is definitely something that you should take a look at, and you definitely should patch your systems, but uh, the sky is not falling. This is not the end of the world. This is not Heartbleed 2.0. Anyone that says or claims that is is lying. Uh, do some research. Take a look at this. Um, but just did just want to draw attention to that. Um, and also, again, they do have their POCs that they release. If you want to take a closer look, play around with this, especially on a Windows environment. Um, you can certainly uh, play around with this POC. Um, these are being added to snap attacks, so you will be able to take a look at these in the platform as well as you know potential detection opportunities. All right, on to the real snapshot. So our friends over at Red Canary put out some really good blog posts. Um, this one is the Intelligence Insights from last month, October, and they talk about and highlight some of the top malware and threats. And we're actually going to dive into the number two here, which um, again from September has been around. This is Raspberry Robin. So Raspberry Robin here, as we're going to see, um, this is a worm and it typically is affecting uh, QNAP devices. So um, in a past life, uh, I did help manage some you know, servers and infrastructure, QNAPs being storage arrays. Um, interesting devices, it's basically running a almost full version of Linux on there. So I could very easily see um, attackers using that kind of like they're using, you know, VMware instances and other machines to, um, again, stage their malware, uh, have command and control infrastructure. Um, you're not going to have EDRs or antivirus or a lot of other telemetry on these devices. So they're definitely really good places to kind of set a foothold in here. Um, but anyway, so Red Canary does a really good job of detailing the threat, a little bit about the history. Um, from what they've seen for a typical Raspberry Robin kill chain, um, there's going to be an infected USB drive that's going to have, again, potentially a software update or some other sort of mechanism to, um, again, make it look like an enticing to click. There's going to be a uh, malicious.lnk, a link file that's going to um, launch CMD or MSI exec. And that's going to go out to the internet, um, download the malicious DLL, which is going to be your C2 payload. Again, you could think about that like a Cobalt Strike Beacon or some other C2. And then they're going to use some other Windows utilities, so either run DLL32 um, or some others to actually execute that DLL. And um, I think the rest is kind of you know history from there, whatever post-exploitation attacks they want to do uh, once C2 is established. So they do have um, a really good blog post. Um, definitely check it out. They talk through detection opportunities, which again, we have gone through for you and created detections in Snap Attack. So let's actually pivot over to the platform and let's talk a little bit about Raspberry Robin here. So we've got the threat captured. I'm going to actually just kind of go through, play the video here, and we'll talk through and see what we have. 
So we're going to open up a folder. We're going to pretend that's a USB drive and you can see we're going to double click a link. Um, nothing immediately happens. We'll see a little CMD pop up um, where it's running some of those other scripts. Again, that's the MSI exec downloading the um, remote file. We're going to help this one along because this POC is using FOD Helper as a UAC bypass and doesn't actually trigger FOD Helper. So we're going to manually call that and I'll show you on the process graph what that means. But um, all in all here, again, this is a really short, about 30 second kill chain. Um, again, we have detection opportunities here, uh, but this one in particular views very well on our process graph. So let's kind of talk through that again and we'll break that down into some, some steps. So when you're going to launch a or double click a malicious link file, um, explore.exe is going to be the parent process. Um, we're gonna see here that that link file is um, launching a CMD. We can see that this command line is heavily obfuscated and really this is launching MSI exec. Um, so that's the built-in installer for um, MSI packages and there is a couple of different options. So you can see here that this has a quiet install. That's what the Q and the I flags are. And this is also connecting out to a remote server, um, port 8080 being one of the default ports that's open on QNAP. And this is where it's going to download, again, a malicious DLL file. Um, pivoting over, we're going to see where that um, actually continues to execute. So um, this chain is going to now pivot over to services.exe. MSI exec is going to launch. And then there's going to be a couple things. So it's going to um, expand a cab file and open up some of those files. Um, it's going to... Um, those files, which are going to be in the temp directory, um, it's going to uh, launch a reg.exe. Um, if you're familiar here with this, this is a reg add command. You can see the MS, um, MS settings open. If you're familiar with that, that's uh, FOD helper. And you can actually see here in this uh, payload here, um, this is going to actually be the FOD helper um, bypass and it's going to launch that DLL. So that's where we kind of helped it along. Um, FOD helper we triggered here and in this instance you can see FOD helper spawning a run DLL 32. Um, they're using um, OBD conf, OBDC conf. So this is again another built-in Windows utility. You can see that um, you know command line. Uh, definitely some interesting indicators there that shell exec run DLL. Um, and again, these are the, the paths out of the temp directory. So this is what's actually going to launch the DLL. Um, the kill chain stops here. Um, unfortunately, by the time that that DLL was um, found, um, the C2 server was down. So this obviously isn't going to connect out. But um, this here is enough of a kill chain, especially early access and early on in the kill chain where we would want to detect their activities. Um, this is definitely very interesting, too, because these are all built-in um, Windows utilities, MSI exec, um, OBDC conf. Uh, so there's a lot of living off the land techniques here, which, again, sometimes can be a struggle for EDRs and other security tools just because there are legitimate uses of these. So if we want to pivot over, talk to some detection opportunities. Um, how would I detect this? How would I hunt for this? Um, couple of different things. Um, obviously, there is some suspiciousness around the MSI exec. Um, so again, this is a built-in Windows utility that is used to install software packages. Um, there are Atomic Red Team attacks around this. Um, this detection here is from the, the Sigma community repo. Um, you can see that this is low confidence, and that is because um, it is looking for primarily the, um, again, quiet install parameters, and it's also looking for things in the temp directory. Um, real world data, there are quite a few installers that do launch to the temp directory. Um, that's just because that is uh, wildly um, you know, writable and it is something where you can throw files. So a lot of times software updates and packages will um, download the file to temp, execute that there, then delete itself. Um, so malware has oftentimes picked up that pattern because, again, it works, it's effective. So this one, again, is low confidence. I probably would not deploy that to a production environment. Um, there are certainly better opportunities here. So um, one detection string is looking for this in um, remote, specifically remote locations. So if it's using HTTP or HTTPS, um, you can see here this is a mandated security validation module where it has the MSI exec quiet install and it's connecting out to um, you know, this server to download this MSI, conveniently named Spawn Notepad, but 
Again, imagine that's another C2 server or something else. Um, you can see Atomic Red Team, they have their own version here. So they're going out to the GitHub repo to download their own MSI. So this is a, a high confidence, highest confidence, high severity detection. You could deploy this one pretty confidently um, to you know, your SIM, your EDR. Um, also, we can take a look at um, how it's going to launch that DLL, not just the downloading through MSI exec. So um, this one here was uh, actually put into the Sigma community by, uh, again, based on this Raspberry Robin blog post and is looking at the um, shell exec run DLL command that's part of this. Um, they do have a couple other command line indicators in here. So we can see this detection is going to hit a couple of times. So this is also a, a high confidence, high validated detection that you could deploy confidently to an environment, which, um, yeah, why don't we actually do that now? Um, so again, once these are configured in Snap Attack, it's very easy. I'm going to deploy this to you know Microsoft Sentinel with one click, and that will go ahead and deploy that to the Snap Attack app on that side. Um, another opportunity for detection here, um, this one is looking at um, additional possible um, Raspberry Robin activity. Um, again, as the Red Canary blog post pointed out, um, MSI exec in particular, um, beaconing out or calling out to HTTP and especially that port 8080 um, seems to be very prevalent. Um, could be further refined. A lot of times they're using very small domains. Um, but again, if this alert were coming in and you were taking a look at that, I think most analysts would say, hey, there's something weird going on here with that alert. Um, so you can see you know, what that would look like. Um, so anyways, that is Raspberry Robin, and that is our snapshot for the week. Um, this is a weekly series, so stay tuned, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.